How are we doing? This is Martin from Garns for Life. Uh, we're here at the grafting workshop, so I thought I'd bring you guys along just to show you uh, what we're doing. We're here at the Sunflower Garden in Roscommon Town. First one done. Yay! It's a uh, MM 106 Fiesta. Windfall Farm Pork. Oh, yeah, the best. Don't forget you can support the work we do and keep our projects going by uh, placing an order on our online shop where we sell. Um, tubers, cuttings and plants. Um, any support is highly appreciated. Thanks so much. So I'm here with James from uh, Knock Vicker and we're here um, just with a, at a grafting workshop in Roscommon Town. Um, so James, tell us, um, tell us why would you want to um, actually graft apple trees? Um, the reason why we'd be grafting apple trees really would be to uh, keep a, um, a, a rare and or a endangered variety of apple um, and or to propagate apples I mean it's been going on for yeah. thousands of years man has been propagating apples or other hardwoods for a long time via grafting it's one of the easiest ways to, uh, to guarantee a, a fruit you know because wild apples would set seeds and you wouldn't necessarily get the same fruit that you would get from um, a, a grafted tree so when you're grafting you're, you're guaranteed to get the same variety of fruit which is why we would, we would do that so just show us the, the, do you have a rootstock which this pair pick it up there? Yep. So this is so this, this is, is this is the rootstock. This is um, an M one eleven rootstock. This is going to turn into about a twelve foot tree. So a, and a self supporting tree, uh, and it'll prove so it won't need staking, and it'll provide fruits after about five years. And so it's ideal for a fairly medium sized garden, or a, a, or a, or an orchard basically, mm. which is what we're doing. We're doing this for a view to producing an orchard style trees. Yeah. Yeah, rather than the small dwarfing stocks, stocks which would be the M27s, which would be constantly um, need, in need of support and yeah. probably be renewed after about 15 years when yeah. they sort of their production starts to wane. Yeah. That well, that said, though, if you're living in a housing estate and you have very limited garden space, it's better to have uh, dwarfs than have nothing, right? Yeah, but, still, yeah, but I mean, know, even but the semi-dwarfs... Like, the semi-dwarfs yeah, are semi not so bad. semi-dwarfs are great. They'll come up to about eight, or eight nine foot. That would be the 106s. Um, they'll be self-supporting, but, you know... Yeah, it's better to have a tree with something on it than nothing, obviously. So, so the rootstock is generally a wild tree, so that's why it's more disease resistant, isn't that yes, right? Yeah. And then the bit you graft on is the scion wood. That is Show it. me that, show us that. So this scion wood, um, this is basically, I think this is Charles, uh, no it's not Charles Ross, this is a piece of Katie um, scion wood, which is a, a nice sweet apple, um, it, you know, it's, it's really hard to tell what individual sign wood is unless you could choose a sign wood from a tree that you know um, so we what we do when we choose our sign wood we'd, we'd get the uh, either first or second year growth ideally um, about the size of a pencil and about uh, about 12 inches long then we would mark what the variety of the tree that it's from and the date that we that mm. we harvested it that could be stored in a refrigerator for about three years or well not three years about three months sorry over the All winter right. so we'd be harvesting we'd be harvesting our sidewood in the dormant season basically Mike. yeah so just keep it and then we'd keep it like cool wrapped up in a in a bit of um a bit of tissue at the base and a bit of plastic um just going yeah to one. We, might, we might have one which we haven't so you keep them in cling film look here this one yeah. oh, you can see here so it's wrapped in cling film yeah so that it doesn't dry out. That's it. So it and would you not take it at the end of the winter instead of keeping um, it in a fridge? It, no, no, ideally, I mean, at the, at the end of the winter's fine, but if you keep it in a fridge, you can, like, say, if we find it a, a tree, a variety of tree that we didn't know 
that was around or someone sold us particularly oh, good. Right. You know, you've got that extended period of time. Which yeah. you Especially if you don't want to have to prune the whole garden in one go. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah there is that as so, well. Yeah, so it's just, just how you line it up then. And well, it's so what we can do. We'll just quickly um, run through how we how we graft. This is so just as we need various tools yeah. now. You're so best off to have a very sharp knife, right? Very sharp knife. Yep. Open um, are great and, open uh, and very good value. Yep. Yeah, the whoops, whoops. Gardener's friend that's sticking into your foot. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, man. No, so open is great. Yeah, we're gonna, so what we're going to do? We're going to um, do a whip and tongue uh, style of grafting here. What we're going to give ourselves about four inches away from the, the, the base of the roots. We don't want to graft down too low because we can get water splashed back onto the grafting point and cause it, and that then can cause uh, like an, it basically ingress of pathogens into the tree. We're going to give ourselves about three or four inches up, cut it, cut about a 30 degree angle, whoops, clean through ideally, bloody hell, so that probably wasn't as, as uh, clean through that I wanted, but so we've got, so we've got a nice kind of 30 degree angle there, um, then what we can do, we're going to put a little um, tongue, which is called the tongue, we're going to come in about a third of the way in, so this t technique of grafting is called tongue and whip? Yeah, whip and sorry, tongue. Yeah. Whip and tongue, yeah. And so we've got about a third of the way in, about, a okay. mil about 10 mils down to give ourselves a little bit of flexibility of the tongue or the, or the whip up there. Um, then we're going to get our, um, our scion wood. Scion wood, we're going to have four buds. So these are the dormant buds. One, two, three, four. Cut off at the fourth one. Using a secretaire. Secretaires. The top one. Top one at an angle, at an angle slightly just leaving the make sure we don't nip the top off the growing bud, and that gives us our scion wood. That bit of wood is, is not going to be so overly hungry, if you like, that it's going to um, drain the resource of, of your scion wood. Um, but what it does also give us, because we've got four different buds there, it gives us um, uh, an ability for the tree to have a, either a second or a third attempt at, at, at sprouting if the bud doesn't take on the first or one or two of the buds don't take first of all. So same again we're going to cut ourselves about a 30 degree and hopefully at the same angle so that definitely, match. definitely at the same angle and ideally the same sort of size. I mean we want Hard enough when you're a beginner and trying to get it right. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's a, it practice. takes a while. It's, it does take a while to practice. But, um, you know, we, we, we were using willow earlier, um, so they're pretty much the same sort of size. There, you know, they're the same diameter of, of, yeah. of wood, of, and you know, there's no gaps between them hardly. So I'll try, I'll, I'll try and pair that back a little bit more. Um, then once we're doing that, um, we will put our, our our little whip or tongue into the top of the of the scion there. Let's probably come a little bit further out when we need to. And when we push the two together or, or create that union, as we push them, we'll, you can see how the, the tongue or starts, or the whip starts to push back and the tongue is exposed. So that's gonna then marry these two chaps together. And so that's, that's our, our scion and root yeah. um, union achieved. Then we once the cambion layer, which is the green layer under the bark, yep. um, matches, anywhere it matches, it will actually uh, hopefully join. Yep, so what we've got is here, that area between the, the, the sapwood and the, and the bark there, this would be the cambrium layer. It's literally a, a millimetre or so of, of wood where the... Uh, or, where the phloem and xylem are running up and down to, to supply the nutrients to the tree. And it's so the only live part of the tree as well? It's the main live part of the tree. I mean, the sap, wood the, itself yeah, the is actually... Wood, the uh, sapwood is live. You know, when you get into sort of plus yeah. two, three years old, you're getting into the heartwood of the tree, which is the main structural wood of the tree. So oh, so wood. the tree, the wood remains um, sapwood for a number of years? Yeah, sap, oh, yeah. Right. Um, sapwood. The sapwood would be literally the first year's wood, you know? Um, yeah, so... Now we're gonna. What we're gonna do is this is grafting tape now, but you can also use this plumber's tape, which can do just a, just as good a job. It can, and it's a lot and cheaper. It's a lot cheaper. Definitely yep. a lot cheaper. And more available. Um, yep. So what we can do, we're gonna wrap up our graft. That way we'll seal the air out and, and it gives it a bit of structural and support. Yeah, and, right? and stabilizes it as well. Martin, you're right there. Yeah, and that's. 
pulls our graft completely together. And I always pull it while you're... Yeah, so you're keeping the tension on. I'm, I'm, you can see I'm holding it in my back finger whilst I'm rolling it in, my, in between my forefinger and thumb. That way we're, we're keeping the tension on our tape and making a nice firm union between the two. And put a knot on it. Put a knot on it. So now ideally you should be able to hold it and bounce it and then that you know that there's a nice firm. Yeah grasp there. Yeah. So once we've done that, we'll put our um, this basically horticultural wax or sealing compound. Um, this then blocks out any oxygen from that area or any air and water, so it stops waterborne pathogens coming in and it also stops um, you know, bacteria from entering the, the wound. This will be then planted out or healed in for a, a, about, a, about a year, basically a season. Um, once that's once that's all, um, after, after, the, after the first year of it being in, we'll come and keep an, an eye on it. The aftercare of these trees will be to watch out for these dormant buds on the rootstock, which basically uh, will be prone to growing into, um, growing into new side shoots, which will potentially dominate the scion wood. Also, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for the scion wood, which is taking as well. Um, we'll also... So you're hoping all the energy is transferred from the roots all the way up into the scion wood, that which is, is your your cultiv cultivated variety. Yeah. And so uh, you don't want the lower buds to grow because they're the wild apple. Absolutely, and they'll, they'll dominate the scion wood. If if, if yeah. allowed to, they'll overtake this wood which has been put in. Mm. So that's, that's pretty much. And once it's in there, then after after six months to a year, we're going to cut this um, compound and our tape off because this will girdle the new. Um, oh yeah, graft that we've made, and that in itself will kill it. A girdle um, means that it's gonna like a string around the tree. It'll yeah, just chop yeah, it. It'll basically strangle it, you yeah. know, because the tree yeah. will grow is a, is a skin on a skin on a skin yeah. a year of year and year. This hasn't got a stretch to be able to take that sort of expansion, or yeah. um, and what the, it will just contract around it and then yeah. it'll break. I have used insulating tape before, but luckily it's not UV proof, so it actually softened up and it brittle okay. it went yeah. brittle so yeah and then after a year. it broke after a while yeah. so that's cool yeah so that's it great we're here in. thanks very much <laughs> all right <laughs> all right folks we're just done with the workshop now i'm just back here at home in the garden and i'm um, gonna collect a few bits and pieces to send off to you guys on monday and uh, we ended up with five apple trees i'll show you those here so uh, you got to make sure that the the roots don't actually get um they don't dry out too much. You can cover them with wet moss, actually. So we got um, five different apple trees, some with a side graft and some with a um, tongue and groove graft. All in all, a great day out. Thanks very much to uh, Paul from Windfall Farm in um, Roscommon here. And thanks a million to Hannah. I'll put your website below. And of course, James from Knock Vicker, thanks a million for coming and uh, teaching us all how to graft. Um, I've done it before, but as I said, I'm only a beginner, so I can take all of the advice I can get. And hopefully some of you benefited from this video too. And graft your own fruit trees. I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a million. <laughs>